Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. The last several episodes have been focused on soul ties, trauma bonds, and attachments. So I'm going to do a little recap of what I've been talking about and then kind of walk you through an exercise, a prayer exercise of ways to maybe clean up any soul ties that you've become aware of, any attachments, any trauma bonds. Um, You could just listen to this if you're driving. I know a lot of people listen to podcasts while they're driving, but I would suggest that for the maximum intensity, if you find this really useful, you might wanna go back and do it as a journal exercise. So again, I just want to invite you if there's things that you're learning If there's questions that you have, if there's feedback you would like to give me about these podcasts, I would love to hear from you. I think most of the platforms will let you send me a message directly. And if not, you can always go to my website and go to the contact section and send me your feedback. So a lot of what I've been going over over the last few months has been from my book, Life Without Baggage, which is actually a workbook. So I would invite you to pick up a copy for yourself if you're finding this useful. There are a lot of things in there in a lot more detail than what I touch on in these episodes. So I'm going to start with some questions to consider as you think about, are there places where you would like the Lord to help you clean up any soul ties, any bonds that you have with people that are just not quite in balance, any connections you have to the past that are a problem for you, or any traumatic experiences you've had, or any spiritual experiences that you regret that you would just like to be a little more free of. So here are some questions to consider. And if you're able to take a few minutes to write your answers down, that would be great. If not, you can just follow along with me. Which family members do you think you may have had problematic attachments to in the past or in the present that are either too close or too painful? As you're thinking about that, I mentioned in the last episode that there can be what's known as identification with the victim, which means your attachment is overly close because you saw one parent victimized by the other or by a boyfriend or someone. And so there is, it's really kind of a trauma bond that you formed with them because you viewed them as the victim. And so instead of being able to enjoy your status as a child, you really grew up too fast. The other thing I talked about in the last episode was a phenomenon known as identification with the aggressor. And this is where you take on aggressive qualities of one of the adults in your home or that was involved with you growing up that you don't really like in yourself, but you know that you acquired it. And it's really in a way a defense because nobody wants to feel helpless. So we can bond with the aggressive authority figure and then we're, we kind of are repeating patterns that we don't even like. 
So those are all connected to these unhealthy ties to a, an authority figure. So another area to look at is what partners have you chosen that you know now were outside of God's best for you? So that could be a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It could be uh, someone that you spent a lot of time with. It can be a spouse that maybe is or is not still in your life. That these are bonds that we form. We may not want the intensity of that bond at this point in our life. Or if we went through a divorce, maybe we're still carrying pain or anger from that experience. This can also be with bit business partners. And it can also be with institutions. That sort of leads to the next question. Did you have close ties with any friends or groups? This could be a church group. It could be a business. It could be something that now you would call a cult that were focused mostly on addictive behavior, uh, rebellious behavior. So I'm kind of lumping those all together. This could also be uh, secret societies. And I'm going to tell a kind of a strange story about myself right now. So when I was, I think about 14, I started a club and I'm not even going to tell you the name of the club because it's not a way I would talk anymore. But I formed this club and it was basically the idea of an oath of I'm always going to be in control. I'm always going to have the upper hand. And so you've heard from me in previous episodes about vows and judgments, that these are damaging. They're, they come out of anger or rebellion or sadness even. They can, they can come out of loss, but they're not good for us. And then they lock us into behavior. And I actually started a group where we took these oaths together. If you are familiar with the Little Rascals, maybe you remember the He Men Woman Haters Club. So it was sort of like that. But um, I had to repent of that. And that formed a bond that probably wasn't good for the, the other people, my classmates, that joined that club that I started. God's had to do a lot of work on me. <laughs> and that's part of why I know about these things is these are things, many of them I've had to do myself, probably most of them. So keep in mind, if there is a secret group a club or um, an employer, anybody that we had to keep secrets for, people that were drinking buddies, bars that we went to, uh, people we did drugs with. All of these can be attachments that we carry with us a little bit that maybe we don't want anymore. For many years, I worked in a nursing home one day a week. And you would be amazed the things that were still issues for people or decisions people made that they regretted, you know, when they were in their 70s or 80s that they hadn't thought about. But they're still carrying aspects of anger or hurt or bitterness, competition with a sibling. It's just many, many things that we may not be thinking about. But if the Lord brings it to mind, then this is a good time to kind of unload it, get it Get it out of the closet. Okay, so the next question, similar to what we've been talking about, were you forced into any behavior, sexual, religious, illegal, secrets that harmed you? And you can write the initials of the people involved. You don't need to write out names. You can just write initials if this fits you. Were you involved in any spiritual practices or false worship or cults? where you looked for something or someone other than Jesus Christ, other than the word of God, for your guidance, for your spiritual power. Some of you might know that uh, before I came to the Lord, I was very interested in the paranormal, all kinds of aspects of the paranormal. Even as a child, I was reading, I was trying to cultivate psychic abilities, um, I was really fascinated by that. So fortunately, I've learned how to invest in the light through my connection with Jesus Christ, through the word of God, to grow spiritually and to let the Lord, the Holy Spirit, illuminate 
the spiritual principles and the ways of God that help us grow, that help us get free. But before I knew the Lord, I was looking into every kind of nook and cranny that the Bible warns us about. I read a passage from Deuteronomy last time, and maybe I'll read that again. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. This is a warning that the Lord gave the children of Israel when they were getting ready to go into the promised land. When you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. That's child sacrifice. And it's still practiced. One who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. So these are some samples of things that the Lord warns us. These are cultural practices that may be very acceptable, that may be very common. And America more and more is becoming comfortable with all forms of spirituality that are actually in rebellion to Jesus Christ. So if you're not sure, you can go back and look up these terms. You can ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes if there are things that you've been okay with that don't keep you in the light, that in any way contaminate your faith. We don't want to drink water that isn't clean. So we want our spiritual life to be as clean as possible from all contaminants. Many of us use a water softener or a water purifier because we only want to take in what's good for us. We don't want a mixture of things that are bad with things that are good. We want to be as healthy as possible. And so you're going to have the most peace and you're going to have the most clarity if the knowledge that you want comes through Jesus Christ. And if the principles that you follow come through the word of God. But my clients who try to mix a lot of philosophies, they don't really grow in their understanding of Jesus Christ because he says he is the way and he is the life. So if we're investigating other things like a buffet, we won't really grow in our connection to Jesus Christ. We may become very knowledgeable of other practices, but those aren't necessarily good for us. So I'm going to guide you in a prayer that sort of is the culmination of these last few podcasts. And we're going to go at some things. If you think any of these apply to you, just go ahead and, and pray after me. And I'm actually going to kind of use as our guide for this prayer, Exodus chapter 20, which is the 10 commandments. So I'm not going to just go strictly with that, but I thought that might be a good way to do this. And again, if you want more detail on this, you can pick up a copy of Life Without Baggage that goes more into detail. So Lord, we just invite you to illuminate our spirits, our hearts and minds. We want to be open to what you want to say to us. If there are relationships, if there are practices, if there are habits from the past that have been a problem, we want to be cleansed of them so that we can be fully alive in you. We want to be fully yours. We want to be able to drink fully from the things that you say are good and protect ourselves from the things that you say are damaging. So we thank you, Lord, that you are God. You are the one who saves us through Jesus Christ. And I repent for any ways that I have made my mom or my dad or a child or a spouse or another partner or another person where I have put them in your place like an idol, where I have let their opinion of me affect my decision-making, where I have let them decide my value and worth or my behavior or what I would do or what I wouldn't do instead of following you. I ask you to forgive me and cleanse me of that tie. I ask you to cleanse me from those 
attitudes that I absorbed in a defensive way. I forgive my mom or my dad for being out of balance and for not protecting me and creating a harmonious environment. I repent for any groups, any philosophies, any practices where I have looked at investigating hidden things that weren't in the word of God, where I have allowed others to tell me what to think, where I have read and digested philosophies that are contrary to the word of God, that lead me away from Jesus Christ, that tell me that I am the master. When Lord, you are the master, you are the potter and I am the clay. I repent for giving in to drugs or alcohol to numb my pain or as entertainment or drugs to enlighten me instead of reading your word. I repent for vows I've made that I will or will not do something instead of letting your Holy Spirit control me. I repent for sexual behavior that was outside of your will. I ask you to cleanse me from those ties. I ask you to cleanse me from relationships that are over, even if it wasn't my desire for them to end. I ask you to unyoke me from partners, from boyfriends or girlfriends, from drinking buddies or drug buddies, from secret societies or groups, from cults, from any vows or oaths I made to other people that were not in your will. I ask you to cleanse me and unyoke me so that I can serve you with my whole heart. I ask you to unyoke me from family patterns of rebellion, witchcraft, addictions, that I would follow you with my whole heart. I repent for taking your name in vain, even though, Lord, that that isn't even considered a problem in this day and age. I repent for times that I have taken your name in vain and not given you the honor you deserve, for not honoring you with my time, worshiping you on a regular basis, keeping your Sabbath holy. So Lord, I don't want to be legalistic, but I do want to follow you. And I don't want to be sloppy. I want to obey you so that I can live in your joy and in your peace, and I can help build your kingdom. I ask you to cleanse me from any of those relationships now that led me away from you. And I ask you to fill me with your spirit, fill me with your peace and restore my soul. In Jesus name, amen. Well, that covered a lot of bases. I hope that you feel lighter and freer as a result of learning these principles and praying. Again, I would love to hear your feedback. So this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thanks for listening. And if this helped you, share it with a friend. Talk to you next time.